Good morning and welcome. This is Pastor Lucy Painter with your daily insights. And today we continue with our topic, Demonstration of Power Day 4. Wow, what a wonderful morning. And as we begin our topic today, I was thinking about the art of illusion and magic and mystery that seem to entice and entrap many. And I believe that is why it is one of the booming business in the world of entertainment. I was checking the history of magic and I realized it goes back to ancient world. Remember the Egyptians, Egyptian magicians? But one reality or hard lesson I learned when I was really young about it is that it's just an illusion. It is not true. It's magic tricks, but not the truth. And I know that maybe when you are a baby, when you are a kid, somebody has just done a trick on you, maybe tried to pull a coin from your ear and you're just amazed. But as you grow up, you realize, hmm, that was just a trick. It wasn't the truth. So yesterday we covered Peter's reaction when together with John, they were brought before the Jewish rulers under the allegation of preaching that there was resurrection after death. We saw the demonstration of a calm boldness in Peter, despite the kind of opposition they faced. And today I want us to continue and see about the undeniable truth that comes from this outpouring. Now, the Bible in, in Acts 4, 13 to 22, we're going to continue a few verses down there. The Bible says that the members of the councils were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John. For they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures. There are other versions that say they were uneducated. They knew these guys were just ordinary men. They also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. But since they could see the man who had been healed standing right there among them, there was nothing the council could say. So they ordered Peter and John out of the council chamber and conferred among themselves. What should we do with this man? They asked each other. We can't deny that they have performed a miraculous sign. And everybody in Jerusalem knows about it. But to keep them from spreading their propaganda any further, we must warn them not to speak to anyone in Jesus' name again. So they called the apostles back in and commanded them never, never speak, never to speak or teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, Do you think God wants us to obey you rather than him? We cannot stop telling about everything we have seen and heard. The council then threatened them further, but they finally let them go because they didn't know how to punish them without starting a riot. For everyone was praising God for this miraculous sign, the healing of a man who had been lame for more than 40 years. You know, I started by talking about magic and illusion. But here is an undeniable proof. He's a guy who's standing right there. <laughs> and uh, let's, let me not jump ahead of myself. So during the time of Jesus, the customs and standards of the generation dictated that the teachers had to have a formal education. They had to go through a system. But here are two individuals with no formal education, gathering people around them, teaching them a new doctrine, a doctrine that had not been approved by the rulers and the scholars of that time. To the rulers, this disqualified the apostles from effective service. But we see this, the Sanhedrin marveling, totally impressed and at a loss that two uneducated fellows could have the confidence to challenge their authority and to quote scriptures to them. I'm just going to pause there. <laughs> and I just want you to picture 
Peter and John, those guys were fishermen before Jesus met them. And you know, the rulers were used to having people cling in fear. And, uh, and 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 before them before that they had not seen anyone challenging them with such boldness but the apostles even without any education had insights into things of god because they had been made clear to them by the holy spirit and this is what gave them the straightforwardness the clarity and boldness This is a kind of boldness that can only come from the fullness of the spirit of God. Hallelujah. The apostles were radiant of a character that their son Henry had only seen in one man before, Jesus. And because of this, that's when they realized nobody told the son Henry. Nobody told them they realized they said aha these fellows these guys must have spent time with jesus these people must have spent time with jesus this is what happened when we spend time with jesus this is when what happens when we experience the outpouring you start radiating the character of jesus you start manifesting the spirit of god in you it becomes obvious that the light of the spirit of god is shining through you hallelujah they didn't need to testify they didn't need to testify no the bible says that since they could see the man who had been healed standing right there among them there was nothing the council could say they could not dispute what they were seeing because like we said the other day when the holy spirit demonstrates his work he leaves no space for doubt he leaves no room for speculation it's not an illusion it's not magic it's not trickery The apostles did not have to go out of their way to prove it. The miracles was examined by the doubters and it stood the test of proof as a genuine miracles. We don't have to have the lame walking among us to know that the spirit of God is with us. We have seen people who have stood at the outskirts of Christianity who people who have led questionable lives people who have not walked with God we have seen them changed they walk among us they stand before us as proof of what the spirit of God does when he dwells within a person and Luke says that they conferred among themselves they plotted further opposition against the gospel that Peter and John were preaching Yes, they knew there was no denying what they had just witnessed. They had asked by whose power and the name and the and and name the man had been healed and they had got in the answer. But the corruption of their heart was so plain that they insisted on threatening the apostle should they continue their work. And I want to just talk to you my listener and I just maybe you are here you're listening to me and you've been listening and for some time you've sat down and you stopped demonstrating the power of God in you because of the opposition that you went through because every time you rise up there is opposition i want to make it clear to you and i just want to bring it across that there is never going to be shortage of opposition to the word of god There is no one time there is going to be shortage of the opposition. There is evidence all around us of what God has done. But people will insist on their sinful ways. But look at Peter's response to the rulers. We cannot stop telling about everything we have seen and heard. 
how I pray that this is going to be your resolve this morning. How I pray that you can make this commitment today and say, I cannot stop telling. I cannot stop saying it. The apostles had seen Jesus arrested, beaten, and crucified. They too had been arrested, handled roughly, and threatened. But Peter, Peter tells them, We are not about to stop what we are doing. And this is the character we see in the disciples. On top of their boldness, consistency. There is no defense against a consistent witness. It didn't take a lot to make the apostles abandon Jesus before the outpouring. But after they had been filled with the Holy Spirit, something changed in them. They were convicted of their faith. They were determined to live out their faith under any circumstances. They were determined to witness Christ over and over again, even before the highest religious authorities of the day. Not even being dragged before the great son hand in court was going to stop them. Decisiveness, consistency. This is what the outpouring did. This is what the Holy Spirit instilled in them. And so the apostles made declaration of loyalty to Jesus and they were determined to follow it to the end. They didn't need to go behind closed doors to discuss if they should follow the Lord's command to witness him to the world. They manifested an obvious confidence, an air of boldness, a quiet authority, and this had become a second nature to them. And I pray today that we may manifest such a character in us, the character of Jesus, that we may express this kind of conviction, this kind of boldness, authority, and consistency until when people look at you, until when people look at me, they say, those people have indeed been with Jesus. Consistency. Because brethren, what we have, is undeniable truth. It's not an illusion. Shalom. This is Pastor Lucy Painter with your daily insight. And this is demonstration of power. Day 4.